This morning we're talking about confession, and uh, <clears throat> we, we got a little bit over onto the side of uh, training our children right, making sure our children are brought up in the way of the Lord, making sure that we uh, teach them the right ways by example, not just, not just by you know, dictating, but by example. Uh, that is, 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 is as or more important than just telling them what to do. Amen? And so we're to keep, you know, keep uh, the Word of God before our children. And uh, we kind of stayed there and didn't get out. So um, let's kind of go here and pick up. Uh, oh, yeah, we were with Jesus. <laughs> we were with Jesus over Mark. Hallelujah. And talking about desires and prayer. So let's pick up with getting our words from the right place. Amen. Let me, I got to adjust this. I'm sorry. I know this is bad for television, but the, uh, the little clip back here is out of place, and it's, it keeps pulling on my ear. So when it does that, then it just it, it's aggravating. Then I'm constantly reaching up here the whole service trying to fix it. So, so can you, you want to start over, Brother Bill? Said so you want to start over? You'll cut in right here. All right. <clears throat> Good. All right. Tonight we're going to pick up from this morning. We're going to pick up with getting right words from right places. Joshua, the first chapter. Let's go over there. Hallelujah. You know, the book of Joshua, we, we can, uh, most of us never got past the first chapter because it's so good. Hallelujah, because it, it's so relative to where we are now. Amen. Isn't it good? The Bible's so good, you can just get to the first chapter and get hung up. Hallelujah. Well, Joshua chapter 1, now, we find from verse 1, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, or spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Uh, Moses, you know, we got a little joke in school, I mean, in, in, in Sunday school and that kind of stuff. Who didn't have any parents in the Bible? Joshua, the son of Nun. Well, that, that's going to be, a, I know where that's going to end up. That's going to end up on a, uh, a Friday joke thing with Dick. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said, um, Moses is minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, rise, go over this Jordan. Thou and all the people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, um, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now, that's enough to run around the room over. God's not going to fail us, and God's not going to forsake us. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the left hand or to the right, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate or mutter, speak it to yourself. Therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then, and as I like to say, and only then, thou shalt have good success. One translation actually says, and that, that, that thou mayest deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen? Well, you'll have good success when you deal wisely in the affairs of life. So we want to deal wisely in the affairs of life. Amen? But God spoke to Moses in taking the helm of leading the nation and said that the way that they were going to prosper, the way that they were going to have good success or deal wisely, was to keep the book of the law in their mouth. Amen? Isn't that right? It shall not depart out of thy mouth. Glory to God. And so, the word of God placed within us, the word of God seated in us, the word of God deposited in us, spoken by faith, gets results that produce good success. Amen? The Word of God is a success book. Now, I'm not saying that you know, you, it's supposed, you're supposed to go use it with your uh, mind over matter gurus. I am saying simply this, that vested in God's Word is success. Because every seed in God's Word, every bit of God's Word, whether the promises of God to us, are full of the life of God. 
Remember, Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. So they're full of the life of God. Amen. God's word is full of his life. Say, God's word, God's word. is full of his life. Now, he said, remember, over, uh, we'll run over there to uh, Isaiah 55. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, don't you love just the King James? Returneth not thither. Glory to God. But watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give what? Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Where have we seen that before? 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Hallelujah. Listen to what he says here. So shall my word be. So shall my word be. What did he say? He, said that the, he says that the rain comes down from heaven, the snow comes down, the dust does not return to the other, but waters the earth and makes it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He says, so shall my word be. It waters, it provides bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Amen. Hallelujah. So God's word, that's what God's word does. And it doesn't return to him void. It does accomplish a thing. You know, he sent his word and healed them. When his word goes out, it accomplishes. And we'll read that here a little bit later. Um, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish the thing, that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Well, how do we know what it was sent to do? Well, look at what it says. If you find scriptures on, on financial prosperity, they were sent to prosper. If you find scriptures on help and healing, they were sent to heal. If you find scriptures on, on people getting saved, they were sent to save. And God says it will accomplish that. It will prosper in that. Amen. And so we need to understand that our source of information for our life of faith, for receiving from God, for getting from God, has to come out of his word. That is where you are going to achieve the ability to live prosperously, to live above the fray, to live blessed by letting the word of God take root, letting the word of God take control, letting the word of God, but you've got to have the word of God in you. Amen? You're not going to get it without the word in you. Remember, Jesus said a good man out of the good treasure of a heart brings forth good things. Where do you get the treasure from? It just doesn't show up out of the blue. Amen. You know, walking by faith and getting from God and, and living out the things of God does not come by some type of spiritual lottery. Now, you might go down to the gas station, buy a ticket, and win $50,000. Then that's just a matter of chance. You know, your number just happened to be the number that came up at that time. All right? But see, spiritual things aren't done by chance. Spiritual things are done on purpose. There is a, there is a way to achieve spiritual things. And the nice thing is you don't have to depend on the chance. You know, you can go broke trying to win the lottery. Now, if you go and win a million dollars next week, come on and bring the tithe. But what I'm saying is, you don't need to be going down there spending, you know. And I, seen, I watched, watched one woman in, over in Asheville one day. She spent $60 in five minutes trying to win something on the lottery. Just stood there and kept, you know, scratching off whatever and then put, putting more money up there. Thank you, Lord. Well, actually, it was $58. I wouldn't say it was 58 Are you kidding me? Yeah, now, now, now you really don't have any gas for your car. You could fill up a tank. You know, and listen, just, just the thing is, it's a, spirit, it's a lottery. It's a chance thing. There is no chance in the things of God. On purpose, you can feed on the Word of God. On purpose, you can make deposits into your life out of the Word of God. On purpose, you can get so full of the Word of God that that's what comes out in faith, and you get the results that Joshua 1.8 promises you, that if the book of the law doesn't depart out of your mouth, but you meditate therein day and night, then you shall make your way prosperous, and you'll have good success. And there's no lottery to it. There's no hoping, you know, there's no just kind of rolling the dice. There is a, a, a deliberate 
deliberate pattern to developing faith in your heart and getting the word in your mouth so that you receive the results that God promised you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's look over there in verse 6. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 13. These words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Now remember, it's not just enough to get it in your head. Memorizing scripture is good, but you've got to go beyond memorization into meditation. That is feeding on it. All right? Feeding on the word of God. But the words I commanded this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk with them. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them upon the post of your house and on their gates. We just watched Ben-Hur the other night. <clears throat> How many of you have ever seen the movie Ben-Hur? Great epic. It's a, it's a tremendous epic from the 50s. Did you know at the time that it was, the book was written, it was the number one Christian, I think to this day it's the number one Christian not book, no, not Bible, but Christian book uh, ever. It's tremendous. You know, the, the movie's awesome. I mean, the chariot race and stuff. But, you know, in, in uh, Ben-Hur's house, every time he went to the door, there was a little pocket with the, with the, um, uh, the candelabra. I forgot what they call that candelabra. Is that the menorah or is it something else? Whatever the candelabra is. And then there was a pocket there with scripture. And every time they go there, they put their hand on it and they, kiss their, they, would, they would kiss and put their hand on it and that kind of thing. And it was just a constant reminder that, you know, that the word of God is that God's word. God's law was, was the reason for success. God's law was to be ever before them in everything they did. Hallelujah. And so you write them on the, on the post of your house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, and vineyards and olive trees, uh, which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Then shall the fear of the Lord thy God and serve, um, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shall swear by his name. You see, the word of God is what makes you successful. Now, the Bible teaches hard work. The Bible teaches diligence. The Bible teaches you know, putting your hand you know, to the plow and not looking back. But the bottom line is, it's God that causes you to prosper. Amen. And you prosper because you live according to the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Things, good things happen to you because you live according to the word of God and you speak the word. You live the word. You walk in accordance with the word. Somebody else say glory. glory. Deuteronomy 11. <coughs> verse 18. We'll read through verse 28. Therefore shall you lay up these word, my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand. They may be as front as between your eyes. And you shall teach them to your children. Speaking of them when I sit in your house, when you walk by the way, um, when you lie down, when you rise up. I'm trying to take a little King Jimmy off of it. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. Now, it sounds just like Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, doesn't it? Well, because God reiterates things. You know, sometimes you have to go over and over and over things to get people to get it. Yeah. Amen? Sometimes people just don't get it. You ever been around people who didn't get it? You know, in business world, you get around people who don't get it, you know? Um, and and manager, manager, managerial jobs, uh, you got employees who don't get it. <laughs> Amen. He, I mean, you just, they just don't get it. You know? And, and, and then I go, and I come in and, and order at your counter, and I know they didn't get it. <laughs> you think, why did they put you out here before they had you fully trained? Hello? Because they needed a warm body to fill a space. You know? And they're constantly going, now, I, I, don't know how, I don't know how to do this. Or they'll go, we can't do that. Well, I just did it last week. We can't do that. Can you get the manager? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> All right? Sometimes people don't get the Bible. They don't spend enough time. They don't, they're not listening right. They're, 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 their minds need more renewal time. Amen? And that's why, you know, but here he's just repeating over and over again, 
keep it in, you keep it in, you keep it in, you keep it in. The Bible, throughout the Word of God, we are constantly reminded to let the Word of God dwell in us. To feed on the Word of God. To speak the Word of God. To keep it before us. Keep the Word before us. Keep the Word before us. Keep the Word before us. And let me tell you, there are lots of things out there fighting for the time and the space of your thinking and of your heart that want to rob you of the Word of God. I, um, I laid down to rest this afternoon and, um, you know, I just turned the TV on. Sometimes I just like the, the, the roar of something in the background just kind of knock out the outside noises of the kids playing basketball next door, the, the woodpecker uh, grinding on my gutter, um, those kind of things. I've had woodpeckers that think my gutter is a tree. <laughs> Do you have any idea what a woodpecker sounds like on aluminum? You know, you deformed bird. And, and it's like, haven't you figured out after the first six months that it's not wood? No. Brrr. Anyway. And so uh, there was an NBA game on, and I had it. I don't know, I left it on for about three minutes, just turned it off. And, I, and, I, was, and I, was, I looked up there at it, and I thought, people are distracted. And we're doing exactly what the Romans did. I'm kind of laying there with my eyes closed because I, I kind of looked at it. I really didn't care about the guy. I really don't care about the guy. I just didn't care. just had it on for some ambient noise. And th but I had it so low you couldn't hear anything other than the, you know, maybe a crowd roar on a big shot or something. Not even couldn't hear the announcers. But as I sat there, I began to think about how distracted we are as a society, as a people, and how that our, our professional athletes, our professional, you know, we, we keep going from event to event to event. You know, we go from the Super Bowl to March Madness to the NBA playoffs to, to the, the Olympic Games, if it's the right year, to the, to the you know, the, the World Series. You know, I, I'm sorry, hot, the Stanley Cup after the, somewhere in all this. And we, our gladiators are our professional sports. And they are just lulling us to sleep with, you know, we got to, oh, we got to go through this season to get to the Super Bowl. We got to go through this season to get to the March Madness. We got to go through this season to get to the playoffs. We got to go through this to get to the Stanley Cup. We got to go through this to get to the World Series. And we're just constantly, it's just like when Rome had the, the whatever number, 100 days of games, the people were distracted. And Satan's trying to distract us. There are events taking place in the earth right now. I mean, when's the blood moon? Tomorrow night or the next night? The first of the four blood moons is tomorrow night or... Uh, either the 14th or the 15th, uh, over the next year and a half. The, four, the fourth one will be on September uh, th 14th or so, 15th of 2015. Okay? You know, uh, there's a lot going on in world events. And we're getting distracted by all kinds of things when the Word of God's calling us to be full of the Word. That this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate in it day and night. I'm not saying, you know, having a television is a sin, you know, uh, you know, watching a television program is a sin, okay? I mean, quite frankly, I'm real excited about May the 5th. Jack is back. Beep, 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 even if it's only for 12 episodes. I'm really excited about Jack coming back, all right? Maybe he'll be back next year. Glory. But you can't get, we can't get distracted. We need, that, means, that means time management. So that the Word of God's taking root in our life and we're spending time in the Word and the Word of God is filling us. Why? So that we can have faith. And so that we can confess the th right things and confess the Word of God and get answers and get solutions that we can't get anywhere else. There are, there are solutions to life that are only going to come out of the realm of faith through the Word of God that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else in these days. So the book of the law can't depart out of your mouth. But you've got to be meditating in it day and night. Can you say amen? amen? Now, back to verse 20. And you will write them upon the doors of your house and upon your gates. Listen to verse 21. That your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the, as, as the days of heaven on the earth. As the days of heaven upon the earth. God wants us to experience days of heaven where? Now, listen, I know we sing this song. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And praise God, it will be. 
but God says he wants you to live a lifestyle and have, because you're living in the Word of God, because you're confessing the Word of God, because you're doing the Word of God, that you will experience days of heaven on the earth. On the earth. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven. He wants you to have them here and now. Amen? Because he wants his people blessed, wants his people to prosper, wants his people to have good things. Glory to God. Um, for if you did diligently keep all these commandments, which I command thee to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to cleave to him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Woo! God's got good stuff for us. I said, God's got good stuff for us. Amen. Amen. Every place where on your soles of your feet shall tread upon, shall be yours, from the wilderness of Lebanon, Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the uttermost sea shall be your coast. There shall be no man able to stand before you, for the Lord of God shall lay, the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon, as He has said unto you. Behold, I set before you, I set before you this day, blessing and curse, blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. God put blessing and cursing before him. Well, how, how do we choose blessing or cursing? You choose it by what you feed on and by what you say and what you're meditating in. Your declaration of your mouth is how you choose it. Amen? Isn't that right? Psalm 1-2 says, it says that the man who does, who does not sit in the seat of the scornful or in the way of the sinner, hallelujah, but his delights in the law of the Lord and his law does he meditate all the day, all day and night. Psalm 19-14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 119-11, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Listen to Psalm 119, 97. This should, be, this should be all of us. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Sometimes I think we get ca so caught up with the principles of doing what God said that we forget we're supposed to love doing it. It's supposed to be our passion. The things of God should be our passion. <clears throat> not just a principle to get us somewhere, the passion of our heart because we love God, because we know him. We know that he will do what he said he would do. Amen. Glory to God. And that was a really good place for you to say, put a real hearty amen. Amen. Hey, good. Okay. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 30. Because we got to make a choice. You want blessing, cursing, good or evil? Verse 10, if thou hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if you turn unto the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul, for this commandment which I commanded this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far from thee. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up to heaven and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is beyond the sea that we shouldest say, who will go over the sea and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. But, what, but the word is not thee. Uh, very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Do it. What, now, what, what does Romans say? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Okay? Paul was quoting from here and then he added on to it. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen? See, I, listen, listen. After he tells you that the word's near you here in Deuteronomy, he says, and that he's, it's in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. He says, see, I've set before you this day life and good, death and evil. In that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And then Romans chapter 8, we says here in verse uh, 8, But what saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess the Lord Jesus, with the, that Jesus is Lord with your mouth, and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Now, let me say this. The confession of the Lordship of Jesus can be the confession of the Lordship of Jesus in your life. It can be the confession of the Lordship of Jesus over your, your circumstances. Be, you know, in other words, we're speaking that, that, the, that Jesus is superior and greater than what we're facing. 
You know, you might be facing tough places. I, I, I dare venture to say that a lot, a lot of people in our church right now are facing a lot of hard, hard places. But we have to live by faith. And we have to rise up to the challenge to say what the Word says because we're feeding on the Word. And we're meditating in the Word. And we know the Word. And we just got to trust that God will do what He said and come through. God's, God comes through. I say, God, that, that, not, might God comes through. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. He said, you know, he said that he knows what you have need of before you ask or think it. Glory to God. God has the answer. He said, if, you'll, if you will believe that you receive it, you will have it. That means God comes through. Everybody say, God comes through. God's already got the plan to deliver you. We just need to lay hold of our faith in him, trust in him, sp speak the word so that he can, he can get in operation. Amen? You know, we, in, in battle many times, in wars, they will stage uh, one of the greatest, if not the greatest staging for a battle was D-Day. If you go look, they, they, they had those guys on ships. They were sitting out there on ships, and, you know, the, the, the channel had bad weather. And they're sitting out there, and they're all kind of running back and forth. Can we, can we cross the channel today? No. Can we cross now? No. But they were staged and ready to go. What they, they were waiting for the word to be spoken so they could go. The plan was in force. The plan was placed. If they didn't do it on a certain day, they, you know, you know they, everything was lined up. And they got the call, go. It's a go. And they had to cross that channel and, and, and storm the beaches of Normandy. And, uh, but that staging was all. See, God's already got everything staged. The plan to deliver you, the plan to get you out. He knows what you have need of before you ask or think. It's already set up. Just waiting for the word to be given. And in this case, it's your words of faith that set it into motion. Hallelujah. God's not surprised by where you are. I, that's one of, my, one of my newest revelations that, that I really have getting a hold of. God is not surprised by what's going on in your life. He wasn't unprepared to deal with what's going on in your life. He had, didn't scratch his head and go, oh, Lord, what, oh Lord, what am I going to do? He didn't turn to Jesus and say, you got any ideas? I'm, I'm fresh out. Amen. They didn't put in a call on the Holy Ghost. They return up to heaven. We got to have a council meeting because Jerry's in trouble. And we just don't know what to do. Come on. God already has the answer. I said God already has the answer. And he's ready to act on that and to, and to put, implement that plan as soon as we give the word. What? The word of faith. The word that's come out of meditating in the word of God. The word that's come out that we know that our, we can trust our God to deliver us and to bring us out. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Somebody else say glory. glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And he went on down here in verse 11 and said, The scripture says that whosoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. That's glorious. I said, that's wonderful. I said, that's glorious and wonderful. Hallelujah. Somebody run around the building. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. My son, forget not my law. Let thy heart keep thy command, my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 4, when we speak our word, when we get into faith, then we have to hold fast. Amen. We got, we got to get to the place that we're settled, that God's going to do it. God's coming through. Plan's on the way. Now, you know, the, 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 the uh, resistance du français, the French resistance, were all waiting for the, for the allies to show up. They were working underground. They were working things. They had codes, you know. Uh, they, had, they had things that were broadcast on the radio, and when certain code words were given in, in combination, they knew it was on the way. All right? Um, when, I, when we were, the last time we were in Paris, uh, a number of years ago, um, I think Nathan, Nathan was still a little guy, so it's been a right good while. He was, he was still, he had to have him on a harness because he'd just get away from him. He'd just disappear. 
So we had to keep Nathan on a harness, like, like a dog harness. It was, for, it was for babies who got away. You didn't see it like that, and Nathan get away. You just like, he got away at the Sistine Chapel. That's when we got the harness. We, you know, that's it. We're at the Sistine Chapel. Turn around, and Nathan is gone. We run down the, down the line because trying to get into the, to the, to the Sistine Chapel. We're all lined up there. We're looking around everywhere, and I hear Nathan say, Daddy, you know, little fella. I look up. He has climbed the wall. He's up on top of the wall. I'm like, harness for you, buddy. <laughs> We're not doing this one again. Hallelujah. So um, <clears throat> we, were, we were down at the, um, the Arc de Triomphe. A triomphe, a triomphe on the Champs Elysees. You know, that's the roundabout, that big roundabout around the arch area. That's, that's what it is. And they were having the, the service for the, or the, the a, a uh, little service or you know, ceremony for the unknown warrior. Same thing as that, this unknown soldier here at our tomb in Arlington. And, um, and we were standing there, and there was, a, there, was a, there was a plaque, a brass plaque right on the wall where we were standing. We were, we were across the street, so we, we weren't over at the arch. We were on this side. And um, there was this, this guy's face on, on, a brat, on a bronze plaque with a name under it and a date. And um, there was somebody near us that, that spoke English. I said, do you know what that is? He said, yeah, that is where a, a, um, a guy from the French, French Resistance was killed. He was killed right here. And so they put, they put a plaque up there with his name on it and stuff. And th then, then you start looking for him. You start seeing him all over the city in different places. But see, the thing was, they were, they were aware that something was coming. And they, kept, they stayed in preparation. They stayed in preparation for the allies coming. They were going to hook up with the allies. As soon as they got there, they were going to hook up with them. Okay? And see, as soon as things begin to, we, we got to stay in faith and stay prepared that as soon as the things that God's bringing start moving in our direction, we hook up and run with it. We got to be prepared. We can't, we can't be waiting until it knocks us over. Hello? We're going to run out and celebrate when they finally show up. You know, you're going to have to be working under... Uh, working behind the scenes in preparation for it, for those things coming. Can somebody say amen? amen. All righty. Hebrews 4.14 says, Seeing we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now, the, the, the uh, King James uses profession. Other translations in the Greek uh, can also be translated confession. We've got to hold fast our confession. Can't waver. Amen? Verse 23 of Hebrews 10 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? There is a reason we can hold fast our profession without wavering, and here it is. He's faithful that promised. Yes, amen. I said he is faithful that promised. <coughs> glory. Can I get a double glory? glory. Uh, the word hold fast here means to, to, to be in a state to continue. I'm sorry, to cause a state to continue on the basis of some authority or power, to hold, to keep, to cause to continue. Um, Vine says it, it means to be strong, mighty, to prevail. It means to lay hold of or take, or take hold, hold and hold fast firmly, glory to God. And so we are to hold fast our confession. And the reason is he's faithful. Ever say God is faithful. God is faithful. Glory to God. When we're not meditating in the word, when we're not feeding on the word, when we're not disciplining, disciplining ourselves to be doers of the word, we can lose track of the faithfulness of God. We can get caught up. Come on. We can get caught up and begin to think God is not faithful because we're not doing our side. And God's faithful. If he promised, he said he is faithful that promised. That means the promises he gave, he will fulfill them when you, by faith, act on them and feed on them and be doers of them. Now, that's shouting ground. Now, I know some of you might need to go home and put a little, you know, WD-40 on your, your brain gears and get them moving again. Amen. So just, you know, just, shh, you know, get, it, get them moving again. I did that years ago. See, years ago, don't cut the mustard today. Now, y'all just look at me like a dog and a new bone. 
what you did years, you know, I used to bench press 360 pounds. I don't do that anymore. Don't you dare put 360 pounds on the barbell. I'll be eating it. I'll be, I mean, I'll, I'll need, you know, dental work. You take that off the bar and drop it, I'll just drop right on my chest. And don't put 400 pounds on a rack for me to squat. I used to squat about 15 times. 400 pounds, just, you know. Yeah. I'd probably go, yeah, boom. Right on back over today. See, what you used to doesn't work for now. And if you used to confess and you used to act on and you used to believe, you know what to do, but you got to do. Knowing what to do and doing are not the same thing. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amen. I mean, at Parker's, we used to have, um, we would take the 32-gallon, you know, Rubbermaid trash cans, and that's what we put, the brand new ones, uh, if it had a red dot on it, it was a trash can. If it didn't, it was, it was used for food in the processing. They'd put ice in the bottom and fill it up with chicken. 32 gallons of, fry, of cut up chicken. Now, most of the time it took two people to grab, you know, two guys. They would grab one, grab one each side, and they'd snatch it up into the sink to dump it over so the girls uh, could wash it and then batter it. I could actually pick it up by myself. Just reach over there and I'd, I'd grab it and just pick the thing up and dump it in there by myself. I don't even want to think about what happened to me if I did that today. <laughs> I mean, you know. Probably go, I'll probably go, help, help. Somebody just help me stand up straight. Because, you know, I'm, I'm not in that kind of condition. Your faith condition can get out of shape. Your diligence condition can get out of, out, out of shape. And what do we do? We go back to doing what we did to get to that place before. Amen. You go back to feeding on the word. You go back to speaking the word. You go back to confessing the word. Until you're back in the place of faith and, you have, and you're having success because what's coming out of your mouth is coming out of your mouth in abundance. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to stop here. We're, uh, trust that you got minister two out of that. Hallelujah. Uh, how many people have gone and watched the program um, since we started with the new camera set up? Dick has. Bill has. All right. Well, go look at it. They, they, they tell me it's really cool. I hadn't looked at it yet. I, just the camera angle is changing. It's much more professional looking instead of just, you know, a center camera just going, mm, 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 you know, getting the side of my face all the time. They actually get to see me all, the, all right, straight on all the time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. We're going to receive our offering. Hallelujah. Fushers, get ready. Uh, while, while we're doing that, we remind you. We're, we're going to put these out, and, and we're, going to, we're going to start. This is, a, this is a campaign. We are here so that people get it as who we are. This is a campaign. Reinhardt Monkey coming to the Greensboro Coliseum. We're expecting a major, major move of God to get people saved. This is not, this is not a healing rally. This is not a, a charismatic renewal. This is get people saved. We can get them filled with the Holy Ghost and get them healed when we get them in the church. Mm -hmm. All right? But we're going to get people saved. And so Brother Reinhardt... Um, you know, it's coming to Greensboro on September 12th and 13th. He says, and God told him that America shall be saved. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's too much seats. I know that in the past few years, it has been a mess here. Uh, our, our politics have gotten caustic. Um, men and women are, are, are empowered that are evil. Uh, they're, this, this is all over the place. Um, <clears throat> we, almost had, we almost started the Civil War this past week, right out in Nevada. I mean, militia showed up to fight the government. I mean, they, they showed up. They were planning on fighting. They brought their weapons. They, were, they showed up to fight, said they weren't afraid to shoot. We're about to start a Civil War over cattle. They were calling it a range war. Like, you know. Where, where's, where's the Duke? You know, he's supposed to come riding in any minute, you know? <laughs> Are you here? But America needs to be saved. God, we have too much seed sown for God to reject America in these days. 
And so we're going to have, we're, we're believing for a great revival. We are participating on the platinum level, which means we're going to have like, we're going to have, ask about 15 of you to go to prayer meetings and uh, to be part of the, uh, the ushering and counseling staff at the crusade. Um, you know, I know that's, well, that's a lot of people in our church. That's okay. We want to get bigger. We want to sow the seed into the lives of getting people saved. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, and listen, when somebody's, when somebody's anointed in evangelism, and when you get 72 million people saved on one continent in your ministry, you're anointed to get people saved. I would think. Okay? 72 million people have made decisions for Jesus Christ under Reinhardt's ministry in Africa. 45 million in the last 10 years. Hallelujah. But see, they don't want just to get people saved and then dump them off on them and say, well, we had a big crusade and 2,000 people or 3,000 or 4,000 people got saved. They want to put them in churches so they can be discipled and looked after and cared for and brought up in Christ. And that's, what, that's, that's part of our role is to be a, be a place where people come to get ministered to. Amen? All right. Yeah.